residue. Get rid of all the white like sauce and blue. It's that sorry for Talking tight ends and fullbacks. We'll combine them. This won't be that long of a video. Um, just let's talk about fullbacks first. Now, big key here, Jalen Samuels. Now, I really want to talk about Jalen Samuels because I do not consider him a fullback. But at the same time, he's not tall enough to play tight end. I don't know if he's a good enough blocker to be a tight end. And I just, I love, I love the kid. He's so versatile. Like I see him being such a mismatch nightmare. Like if he gets on the, if he gets on the right team and they know how to use him, And I think that's, what's going to happen. I think a team's going to draft him that, that that's going to use him in this way. You know, th- th- he has the ability to do so much. He could be, you could, you could like move him out to the tight end. Um, if you wanted to, he could play running back. He can go out for passes. I think that I think he could even go out in the slot. I mean, his limitation is limitless. Now, the fact that he's not a real wide receiver, I mean, he was he was more of a wide receiver than he was a running back at NC State. You know, NC State has another good running back in um in Hines. So it's kind of hard to and and the note and the note that all those other good running backs are out, it's kind of like, man, he's gonna fall to like 15 or so in my eyes. Uh, of like ranking of um, the what's it called the 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 running backs, but to me I just I don't know I love the kid he's so versatile and I think he's gonna get on a team that knows how to use him in the right way but he's not your prototypical fullback you know he's not he's just not that it's he's not gonna be that guy for you he's not a full he's really not a fullback and the fullback you know the dying breed of the NFL like I call it I Mike Allstott. Man, getting to watch Mike Allstar run back in the day, I sure do miss those days. Peyton Hillis, you know, Peyton Hillis was a, was a glorified fullback, uh, which basically came a running back. So Demetrius uh, Flowers is my top guy. Um, he's the most prototypical fullback. Uh, he was one of Baker's favorite targets in the run pass option um, this last year. And he caught, I mean, he was good in the passing game too. He's able to go out for passes and stuff like that. I mean, he's a really, really good player. I like Demetri Flowers out of Oklahoma. Khalil Hill. I didn't see a whole lot of Khalil Hill this year, but if you go back and you watch his junior year film, I, he's, he showed some really good hands. I don't know if he's tall enough to be a, a, a tight end. Um, and he was, he, he would come out the backfield some and he, he'd run the ball some. Um, I got him on my list as a fullback, but I liked the kid a lot. Um, Nick uh, Nick Badwin, maybe a guy that most people hadn't heard of. This is the guy that was blocking in front of uh, Rashad Penny all year. Uh, this guy, I think, was a quarterback or maybe a running back or something like that when he was in high school, and he put on so much weight to become a to come become a fullback. And my thing is with with fullbacks is if if you if your running back's pretty good. Like somebody's clearing those holes for him if if it's an eye formation type thing. And Nick Badwin was that guy. Um, Daniel Marks, the guy from Stanford, uh, he's on this list because of Bryce Love. You know, Bryce Love had a great year, and Daniel Marks had some good games. Um, obviously not production wise, but he was a good blocker for for Bryce Love. Ryan Nall, I kind of put I'm kind of putting Ryan Nall as a fullback because I don't I mean I don't know why he came out. He was only a junior. He didn't have to come out. And I'm going to put him as a fullback because I think his best option is to put on weight. And, and because when you talk about Ryan Nall, to me, he's like a back, maybe maybe top 50, maybe maybe top 40 running back. Like he wouldn't have even really been on my, my running backs list if I would have put him on my running backs list. So I said, well, I'll probably go ahead and put him on my, my fullbacks list. And he's a guy that could turn into a Peyton Hillis. I can see that happening. I can see him being a Peyton Hillis type. Um, Garrett Dickerson, um, I put him as a fullback. Maybe a tight end, but he's so versatile. He, uh, they have a special back at Northwestern, and so he'll line up at fullback, tight end. Um, it's hard to grade because you can't really see how he's going to translate. So this guy may, you know, when combine comes around, he may, you know, they may start looking at him as a tight end. Um, but I have him as a fullback, and I think he's a he's a pretty versatile guy. Um, Nick Sharga is a guy from Temple, pretty good blocker. I like him, and then Austin uh, Ramish. I added him to the list. You know, Wisconsin always is, has has good blockers, and um, their offensive line is awesome. You know, tight ends are usually pretty good, and and uh, Jonathan Taylor had a really good year, so he kind of got on this list kind of like because of uh, Marks and and, and Badwin, uh, J.D. Moore. 
a guy from LSU, pretty good. And then Marcus Martin, a guy I really don't know a whole lot of, but I've seen him on um, a couple of different draft lists. And I haven't really been able to find any film on him either. So he's kind of just my 11th guy. I really don't know. I just have seen him. So he went to Slippery Rock. I, I mean, I don't really know how you're gonna how how I'm gonna find any film on him. But so let's talk about tight ends. You know, fullbacks really aren't that big of a deal. You know, there's a couple of good ones. That, I mean, they're the dying breed of the NFL. It's it's a whatever. Um, tight ends. It, this is a position that I really like. Um, security blanket for the quarterback is is what I call it. Um, and you talk start at the top. I got Mark Andrews. You know, I was trying to base, you know, my top six guys. I really, really liked the top six tight ends. It was really hard for me. And even these top six guys, you might, wow, do you want to have him at five or why? Like he could be higher. That, I mean, that's the thing. Like, it's just so hard. And I just, I just want to say, want to say first off the top six guys that I talk about are absolute studs. I think they're all going to be great tight ends at the next level. Mark Andrews is the first guy I'm going to talk about. He's my number one guy because I he showed me the best balance of blocking with the ability uh, to catch the ball. Now, he did line up in the slot a lot of the time, so um, you can say, well, you know, how, how about the, how the blocking or whatever. I think Mark Andrews is, is by far the best bet to get a uh, safest bet to at, at the tight end. I like him a lot. Uh, Mike Gesicki. This is a guy that played volleyball. He looks like a volleyball player. He reminds me of a kind of not, I'm not going to say Jimmy Graham because Jimmy Graham has been an awesome player and and you shouldn't compare a guy to like Jimmy Graham. Um, But when you talk about in the red zone, and if you watched the NFL any of this last year, you saw how impactful Jimmy Graham was in the red zone. Like every time uh, they were in the red zone, like inside the five, uh, Russell Wilson was going to Jimmy Graham and they just threw that, that jump ball. And I think Mike Gesicki could be the same way. I think he could be a really, really, um, good red zone tight end. could be a nightmare down there. Um, but I think he, uh, the reason he's not one for me is because, because the, his, he struggled. I think he's going to struggle blocking his height, um, you know, blocking some of those smaller defensive defensive ends or whatever. And that's the reason I think he might fall a little bit, but I get him at two. Uh, Dallas Godert, this is one of my favorites. A FCS guy. I love the FCS players. They're just diamonds in the rough. And this is a guy that's been talked about for a while. He had a way better junior year than he had senior year. I think another one, it was kind of one of those where – you know, you you heard about him, so you're like, okay, I'm gonna pay attention to him the senior year. And he had good games, don't get me wrong, but just not the jun- not the same as his junior year. His junior year was absolutely amazing. I like Dallas Godard a lot. He could very easily be the top guy on this list. You know, if I if I was kind of getting crazy and and, and did my favorites, I, he'd probably be my number one. Um, and he reminds he reminds me a lot of Travis Kelsey, not just. Not as much like what he does on the on the field, but his attitude. He's, he's he seems like a fun guy, and um, I mean at the same time on the field, I guess so. I wouldn't I wouldn't put that there if I didn't if I didn't really feel that way. Now Hayden Hurst, this guy, this guy is going to be your Jason Witten. He's going to play in the league for 10, 15 years. He's just a blue collar guy. He's not one of those guys that really just jumps out at you. But he had a solid year, um, and. He could like, he could very well be better than those top three guys that I mentioned before him. I love Hayden Hurst. I really like. I I think Hayden Hurst can be is going to be another one of those top guys. Troy uh, Fuma, uh, Fumagalli, um, really talented pass catcher, and he went to Wisconsin, so he has to be a pretty good blocker. Um, they teach him how to block over there. Um, so I like I like uh, Troy Fumaga, uh, Fumagalli. He's um, and he's a guy that just at the first year he probably would have been like three, you know, behind Gasicki and Andrews. And he's just kind of not I mean, he's dealt with injuries and and it's not he's not fallen because he's done anything bad. I just I've kind of started to like the Hayden Hurst over the year. You know, Hayden Hurst is a guy I didn't know anything about going into this year. And um he really impressed me this year. Adam Brenneman, um, this kid is a diamond. I like this kid a lot. He he went to he's at UMass. So, you know, he doesn't get a lot of, you know, airtime or whatever, but this is this is a, a real good kid. I like Adam Brenneman from UMass. Jordan Atkins, kind of undersized, super, super athletic. Um, I don't know if he can block at the next level, but as an, at an athletic and, and pass catcher, I like Jordan Atkins a lot out of Central Florida. Um, Dalton Schultz, 
you know, Dalton Schultz or Stanford tight ends are just really smart. They they have the ability to understand how to block at the next level, and they're just a safe bet. So, I, and he came out at his, after his uh, junior year, so he's number eight on my list. Cam uh, Syring- Syringi, I think is his name. I can't really pronounce his last name. He played at Wake Forest. This is a guy that he just kept showing up on film for me. Like every time that I'd be watching a Wake Forest game, he'd make a big play or he'd he'd be doing something. I think he's going to be a great red zone target. Um, Chris Herndon from Miami kind of overshadowed at Miami because um, they have some other good, really player, really good players on their team. But this guy's really big. Um, he needs to improve his blocking, but he could be a guy that could be a stud at the next level. Ian Thomas is a guy I really didn't know a whole lot about. I had to watch some film at the end of the year. I didn't really watch a lot of Indiana games. Um, good blocker, underrated hands, um, with the ability to catch the ball uh, or with the ability to run after the catch. Um, is a couple of notes that I wrote down for him. And um, I think, I mean, this guy could be higher. I think this guy is one of those guys that's kind of higher on other people's list. But just the fact that I didn't watch him throughout the year, I don't have that as, as much of a feel for him. But he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's number 11 on my list. Andrew Vollert, or Andrew Vollert, uh, this kid impressed me late. You know, he played at, he plays at Weber State. He had this sick one-handed one-handed catch, and I don't I don't like to you know get kind of crazy about kids after one-handed catches and stuff like that. But something about him, and then, but the thing is, is he just he's kind of small. He's really he's really small. It seems like he hadn't been in the weight room for about four years, and I don't know if he can block at the next level. So I can see why this kid's really not that high on list. But but he's a guy I like, Andrew Vol, uh, Voller from Weber State, uh, Durham Smith. Um, Notre Dame tight ends are always pretty good, you know. Other than the fact Eifert's been hurt a lot, you know, Eifert, Kyle Wa- or Kyle Rudolph, um, two guys that I can think of off top. Uh, there's a kid named Troy Nicholas. He didn't really make an impact yet, but he was good. It's kind of like the Stanford thing. These kids are just they're just really good at Notre Dame, um, and I think I think he could be pretty good at the next level. Um, Ethan Wolf. Ethan Wolf is a guy that didn't really have a good year. You didn't really hear about any, you know, Tennessee throughout the year because they're, you know, they're just so, so much ass, but out of all the tight ends, he has the best size. And I think he could be a really good blocker. Uh, Dion Yelder, a guy that I, that impressed me late. He's a guy I didn't really notice until I started watching more film on Mike White. And this guy's really not big enough to be a tight end per se at the next level, but he was a really good pass catcher. So I I'm, I'm putting him on my, on my list. Uh, Ryan Izzo, um, to me, Ryan Izzo, he came out and I think he could be a pretty good player. Um, he has the ability to block and catch the ball, but we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens with him. Marcus Bog, I I don't know a whole lot about Marcus Bog, but he looks like he could be a, a a pass a good pass blocker. But he's not a guy that I'm real high on. Jake Roth under the radar. I think he could be a solid tight end. If you know if he goes to the right team, he's from Boise State. David Wells, another guy just like uh just like Roth. He went to San Diego State though. Um, and then Blake Mack is a kid that. Somewhat impressed me late. I don't know a whole lot about Blake Mack, but for some reason I put him on my list. And um, like I said, they're the they're the security blanket. And um, but those top six guys: Adam Brenneman, Troy Fumagalli, uh, Hayden Hurst, Dallas Godert, Mike Gesicki, and Mark Andrews are definitely my favorites of the tight ends. And for the fullbacks, Dimitri Flowers. Uh, and and Jalen Samuels, even though he's not really that type, and I'm gonna go with Nick Badwin. I don't think Nick Badwin's on a lot of high on a lot of lists, um, but he's a bad dude. I like I like Nick Bald, uh, Badwin.